Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me well enough. I'm in Wyoming, it's always windy, uh, but let's see what we can do about a soil, tax, uh, soil texture test in a very rocky environment. So step one, go dig a hole. All right, sweet, hole dug. All right, just to show you a little bit of the soil that we're working with, I know we don't talk about horizons in class, but we can see some pretty clearly here. We've got, right, this is the surface horizon. Goes down to about there. Very clear difference here, right? Uh, very light color. And then something kind of a bit of a change here. Probably a little bit of, maybe some clay looks like a little bit, a little bit. Um, but yeah, so basically, rocks. It's all rocks. All right, step two, get your soil sample. If you need to, like we do here, run it through some kind of sieve or something so that you get actual soil, right? Actual soil rather than all that rock. Just whole, <laughs> whole bunches of it. I don't know if it's jasper or granite or probably a bunch of things like it. We're on the top of mountains here. Um, it's, it's a lot of rock, not a lot of soil, top of the Bighorn Mountains, so, yeah. All right, next step, get rid of all this rock because we don't want it. All right, cool. All right, take a bit of your soil, right? I'm not going to need more than like this handful. Put that in there, take a bit of water. Add a bit, already too much, look at that. Made like a slurry mud. That's, I'm not gonna be able to work anything with that, right? It's uh, uh, too much already, So, but that's fine. Take a bit more, always try and take a good scoop. Don't try and like bias it by, you know, only picking the top or something, like take a good mix. Add a bit more in there. All right, now we're getting somewhere. It's looking pretty good. A little bit wet, but that's all right. All right, and hey, look at that. After all the rocks are gone, that's not that bad. You know, it's, you want, it kind of, kind of like dough, right? Kind of like if, uh, kind of like if you're baking something, you, you want it to pull away. You, you don't want it to be stuck in your hand. You want it to mostly come away when you squeeze it like this, right? So, you've all seen the, the flow chart. I'm not gonna necessarily go through all of it because the important part is one, get the rocks out. But hey, look at that, isn't that nice? All right, probably use a little bit less. All right, and then, so hold on. Whoops. All right, now, we're gonna try and start ribboning it, right? Still too much. The ribbon, here, how do we get in here? There we go. The ribbon, you want it to be coming right out, like right out of that, that there, right? Between your first finger, knuckle, knuckle, meat of your hand, thumb going across, leaving kind of like this triangle. And if you just squeeze, it comes out like that. But we're not just gonna squeeze. What we're gonna do, keep dripping this stuff. What we're gonna do is squeeze it out a little bit. It's been a while since I've done this. Squeeze it out a bit, squeeze it out a bit more. You know, keep working it up. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm kind of cheating. It's not really going out, but it's, it's breaking already. So I got like, what, barely even, maybe two inches, two and a half, something like that, on the low side. Try again. Or here, we can, whatever. Get a bit of this stuff. Honestly, I'm surprised how well it's sticking together. For as much rocks in here, it seems like we've kind of got a decent amount of 
well, any amount of clay is nice to have. And then it seems like we got some, some decent uh, silt. All right, so you're just kind of, you know, you're just kind of ribboning it. And you can see it's, it's already trying to break, right? It's, uh, it's gonna, it's there, right there. Uh, yeah, an inch maybe. We try, if we try harder, we might get two inches. It's already breaking. Yeah, an inch to two inches. That's that's uh, that's all we got. I forgot about this part. So when I ran that, when I ran the soil through here, right, and I got all the rocks out, something else that was important that I did, you can see, you can see like uh, a little bit of this aggregate still, right? Um, as you're grinding the soil through the sieve, you bust up these aggregates. And even as I'm doing it now, they're busting apart into tiny little soil particles. If they don't come apart as easily as that, if you have more clay, then what you do is you take this, you know, you take your sample and you just keep working it. I don't have to worry about heating it because it's about a, it's about noon here right now in the Rocky Mountains, and it's hot, and it's been hot every day. Uh, so I don't need to worry about wor warming up the clay, but but you can um, you can still kind of find microaggregates a little bit sometimes. And what you could do if you really had a problem with them is is just you know just work it through. You don't have to go straight to trying to make the soil texture. Prep it first, right? Like make sure make sure it's well worked. And see again like a. It's about right, like it's just kind of sticking to my hand, it's kind of coming right up when I do that, right? I don't want any more water, I don't want it to be any more dry, which does mean that the longer you do this, it's all, I mean, it's already drying because it's, again, like my, my climate right here is uh, very dry. Um, it's drying out, I can feel it already. Um, you can kind of do a little bit of a cheat like this, you know, if you want, you can put it right over your finger. But also start feeling this is important it's it's just it's I can feel it clinging to this finger right right around there I can feel it's using my finger to hold itself together if I you know if I took my finger out of there it do, the ribbon doesn't hold you want you want something that holds on its own and it's not going to you also don't want to you know if I make some tube like this like oh look it's it's like holding so much longer well yeah you're kind of cheating though because it's a uh, it's too thick you need it to be flattened out a bit. You're starting to ribbing. And again, you're just getting that tear. I'm gonna say, you know, maybe 10, I mean, 20 would be optimistic, but I'd say 10, 15% clay. Uh, what's something else we can do? The whole, uh, the, like, this part, it seemed like a lot of you got this, but um, put a little bit more water in there. Kind of goop it around, and then just what do you feel? I mean, it's, uh, honestly, it's kind of too much water in my opinion, but I can already feel the sand. If you want to, um, yeah, if you want to feel the silt, that's probably enough. Just kind of do 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 do. Silt feels like flour, basically, like flour and water. If you if you don't know what that feels like, go do it in your kitchen. Get some flour, get some water, put it together, and that'll be silt. So in this, I'm feeling, honestly, like a lot of silt and some clay. I mean, sorry, some sand. I'm not feeling clay. You can't really feel the clay. Um, I think that's why we do the ribbon. But honestly, like, it's, uh, it's better than I expected. It's silty. I'm going to say probably... Uh, hmm. A silty clay or no geez a silty sand that's my bet that's what we got here if I went through the flow chart um, which is, is again is better than I expected all right so that's about it for um, soil texturing in a rocky environment um, you're gonna have to wait a couple of weeks for me to get back to the Willamette Valley to have something with a high clay content uh, to be able to show you the ribboning a little bit better but hopefully 
uh, this video kind of helps you out a little bit. All right. There we go. A little bit less water. Goes out farther, but you can see it's still breaking. I'm getting at best like one inch pieces if I add a little bit of water back. Probably, you know, get back to about an inch and a half, almost two inches before it really starts fracturing. So, this is why water content is important.